Hey y'all, this is Travis with Hoss Tools and this is a little segment we do called Garden Goodies. It's just a compilation of short videos that we shoot on our phone throughout the week as we're walking through the gardens, harvesting things, weeding, doing whatever we have to do to maintain a vegetable garden so we can grow our own food. I really hope you enjoy it and if you have any questions, I always put those in the comments below and we'll try to answer them for you. We're excited to have something new this coming year and we've gathered the seed crop today. We were lucky enough to acquire a, just a handful of this squash and I call it the owl squash, but it's got a longer name than that. But for, you know, my benefit, we're gonna call it owl squash. This is an old heirloom that's really went by the wayside. So when we acquired these seeds, we're excited to try them out. So we grew 200 feet as a trial. Now a couple of things that had to meet for us, it had to be productive, it had to be disease resistant, and it had to add something because we didn't want to bring something out that nearly didn't add nothing, that had, didn't have benefits to it. So when we looked at this, it had to be productive, it had to have good taste to it, it had to be somewhat disease and insect resistant, and it met all those qualifications. Now the productive part of it, I want you to look at here. This came off of 200 foot rows. I mean, we had two 100 foot rows, so that's a total of 200 foot of one row. And look at what we got off of that. Now we've eaten a few off from there, so there was a few more added to this. But this morning we went through there and we got, we left some coals out there. There was some that didn't meet, um, you know, that was misshaped or whatever that we left in the field. These are what we consider the good ones that come out of there. And man, look how much of the harvest there. Two 100 foot rows. Now we had them on drip, but I'm telling you, I was blown away with uh, how productive they were. Also, they're really good to eat. Now these being the pepo type squash, they have really short vines. They don't sprawl out a lot, so it doesn't take a lot of room to grow them. And also they have a fairly short growing season. You don't have to cure them. When you harvest them, you can eat them. Now when they're ready to harvest, they look just like this right here. They have some green on them. The belly will be orange and they will start getting some orange on them. When they get purely, uh, when, they get, when they get all the way uh, ready, and you put them in storage, they turn a, a kind of a bright orange. But you can eat them when they're like this right here. This one will continue to turn a solid orange. They store probably six to eight weeks, ready to eat straight off the vine, like this right here. We've been eating them and they're really good. So there you have it, something we're really excited about this year, owl squash. You see that right there? That's the last of the yellow squash and zucchini for this year just picked what little bit we had left out there the heat and the pickle worms is just getting after them too much so we picked what was left cut our losses and um gonna enjoy what we can out of it we don't can squash but we sure enough do like to eat it when it's fresh so on the menu tonight is some uh blts fried squash and eggplant we got us some black creme tomatoes there we're going to use on our blts and uh, got our eggplant and squash ready right here. Now if you're gonna fry squash or eggplant, it's a real good idea to come in here, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes before you plan on breading it and salt and pepper it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make these things sweat a little bit. And it's gonna give a little moisture there and just make that flour or whatever you're using for bread and stick a little bit. We're going to use whole wheat flour on these. So I come in here with some fresh ground black pepper, some fresh ground Himalayan sea salt, and uh, salt and pepper them good, and you can see that moisture coming out of them now, and that's going to make that whole wheat flour stick really good. We, we've been using a lot of this King Arthur whole wheat flour, makes a real good bread. And, Eggplant especially have to do this because eggplant is really really dry when you cut it and uh, So when you you see that moisture coming off of it now When you salt it like that you get some moisture coming out of it, it makes that batter stick Nice little fries there Now my eggplant I like to cut a little worm try to get in that one but I don't like to let them get too big. They get kind of pithy and spongy, so we like to cut them up about this size. 
You can do a lot of different things with eggplant. We've been really liking making fries out of them like this. So, BLTs, fried squash, eggplant fries, gonna be some good eating tonight. Folks, it's sweet corn harvesting time. This is our plot of temptress quad sweet corn. That's a bicolor corn. Now it is weedy in there. I know I got some issues I got to take care of once I'm done with this corn. But this stuff is ready to pick. We've been coming in here, getting it out of here. You can see the most silks is dried up like that. That means it's time to get it. So we've been in here getting it. I done got about six and a half, seven of the 11 rows. I'll show you what we got over here. So we've been getting about a little over a five gallon bucket per 30 foot row loading up here. And I don't know if I'll pick it all today, but I got at least half of it picked. Now we're gonna put this up. We're gonna cream this. May whole kernel a little bit of it, and we're gonna put it up in the freezer. Now, you know I preach to you all the time about how that spinosad works great on corn earworms, and it does. I didn't have a single earworm on my first crop. But sometimes the weather just don't always cooperate with you. And as this stuff was getting ready the last two weeks, I swear we had a little shower about every afternoon. And I didn't get to spray this but about one time, whereas I should have been spraying it, you know, at least twice a week when it gets hot like this and that worm pressure builds up. So what we got here is we got us a little bit of worm damage on the end there. Let me get that fly out of there. So you can see just on the tips there. Now, city folks won't eat this corn, but if you like us and you grow it up in the country, you know that right there ain't gonna hurt nobody. We'll just take our knife, we're gonna cut off that tip anyway. We're gonna go to cream it and uh, it'll be just, just fine. So we're not gonna sell any of this corn because like I said, them city folks won't eat it. But uh, us country folks, we know better and we'll, uh, we'll eat the fire out of this right here. Look at them nice full ears there. Pretty bicolor corn. Already filled out nice and good there. We've had a little bit of this on the cob. I snuck a few ears this weekend and uh, boiled some. This is some fine eating sweet corn. So we're going to cream this up, freeze it up, and we'll have plenty of sweet corn to eat. We'll try to take you along the ride there as we kind of process this a little bit. So that's our second plant of sweet corn. Probably won't plant another one till uh, end of August. We'll plant one more crop. This has made me a believer in the fact that you can succession plant this stuff year round. If you got irrigation, if you can feed it with drip tape, if you keep it fertilized, you can grow this stuff in the heat. The worm pressure is gonna be a little bit higher, but um, it can be done. So we're gonna at least get three sweet corn crops this year. And I believe a fella could get four or five if he tried real hard. So we got us a little corn station, a little corn processing station set up underneath the garage here. I'm gonna turn this fan off so y'all guys can hear me. Need you a good fan if you're gonna be doing this, especially if you're in the south and got gnats and flies and everything else. So we about a little over halfway through. That first picking we did was, was a little over half that thousand square foot plot. And what I'm doing is I'm just shucking them here. Got me a little bucket I can keep all my trash in. I've been known to make a mess doing this. I might have to blow this off later. Or else we have flies and stuff everywhere. But anyway, got me a bucket, a shucking bucket right here. And uh, got my corn right here. Just kind of piling it up gonna try to shut a majority of it and then flies off there and then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna silk it we got our corn silking brush right here we got these on our website nice little tool it's got real soft bristles on it. you use a brush with two hard bristles you're gonna booger up your corn bag so you need your nice soft brush good corn silking brush that one there made in the usa that one's seen many ear of corn it's gonna see many more ear tonight some of these ears 
don't look quite as long as you'd expect and that's because some of that worm pressure we had we had to cut the tips off of them but considering that we got some fine looking corn right here and um, I believe once we get it all cut and creamed and everything we're going to have a good little freezer full so this temperature's corn is looking good I have or I will admit I have snacked on the ear or two raw here and there just to keep my energy up and uh, nothing wrong with this stuff here this old quad sweet corn is good it's just something about bicolor corn I mean I like white corn I need to cut that out right there I like white corn I like yellow corn just something about this bicolor corn man it just looks good and it is good so um you know next step after shucking will be silking and then it'll be creaming time it's time for a little update on our sunflower showdown 2020 here see we're starting to get some blooms on up there and uh this is a competition we're doing several other youtube channels we'll tag them in the description here for this video but this is our american giant hybrid sunflowers and as you can tell they have started to bloom nice beautiful blooms way on up there the bees have been just all over these things this morning i quit pruning the side leaves because felt like it, they were tall enough i didn't need to do that anymore but you can see we got nice and cleaned up down here along the base of this row got that drip irrigation feeding them very well i've been letting the drip run overnight on these guys every time i water them about every two or three days these things can just soak up some water so we've been laying the water to them we fertilized them uh, one more time with some of that complete organic fertilizer kind of threw some soil up around the base of those stalks to kind of help stabilize them a little more i got this one little nub right here my son abram was helping me prune some of these lateral limbs uh, a few weeks ago and he accidentally cut the top out of one of them so that one there it may make some blooms on the lateral shoots but uh we got 39 more of them here to count on now these right now are about nine feet tall if you go to the top of that bloom up there and i presume that they're going to keep growing uh every picture i've seen of everybody else's uh, from our customers and stuff looks like these things will just keep growing and growing and getting taller so about nine feet now and uh hopefully we can see them get on up there in the teens as far as height goes the leaves on these things are absolutely massive i'm going to show you put my hand on this guy right here you see how big those leaves are they are huge the nice big leaves and uh just you know we're growing these things for the competition but I, I just really really like this variety and i can't wait till uh next year maybe or maybe even this year i might plant me several rows of these almost a whole plot of them they're just so pretty and um if i plant them again and not doing the competition i'll probably leave those bottom limbs so we just get some nice coverage there shade out some weeds and stuff but super happy with our giant sunflowers so far and uh, y'all make sure y'all go check out all the other channels involved and uh, see how theirs are growing i know uh, many of the others are already blooming as well and uh hopefully we all grow some real tall pretty giant sunflowers here we always get questions what do i need to do after my garden is quit making in the springtime our tomatoes our peppers and all that is gone it's the middle of the summertime what do i need to do now today i'm going to give you three options of what you can do when those crops are going to fill in that gap before the fall garden season starts number one is sunflowers look at these babies right there we've used sunflowers as a cover crop but they also give you the wonderful uh, flowers for cut flowers and i always like to mix it up a little bit put a few different colors in there these babies grow fast you can plant them plant them thick they grow shade out your weeds so it's a cover crop slash cut flower best of both worlds next is the buckwheat now this is a standalone cover crop and the pollinators just absolutely love it you can see the bees flying around in there now buckwheat is great because it grows uh, fast shade out those weeds it's easy to cut in 
makes a good cover crop and it loves the heat. So that's a good one for the summertime also. And lastly, number three, iron clay peas. Iron clay peas are a legume. And what that means, they attract nitrogen out of the atmosphere and attach it to the roots of these plants. So you get free fertilization from mother nature. So we love to grow these in the middle of summertime. They like the heat also. We grow them, they're easy to cut in. And when we cut them in, we got that nitrogen in the soil that waits on our other crops. Our cold crops have already got nitrogen there waiting for them. It's a great soil builder. And all three of these cover crops here in zone eight, you can plant up to heck probably the 1st of September. So there you have it. these heat loving plants, cover crops, cut flowers that you can grow in the summertime. Fill that void between your spring garden and your fall garden. Y'all check this out right here. This is a newly planted cover crop of iron clay peas. This is where we had our Avalon sweet corn in the spring and we got us a good nitrogen fixing cover crop down there. We, uh, we planted these on a YouTube video, which will be upcoming in the next uh, few days. You can see how we planted these and we'll talk a little bit more about our cover crop strategy here. But uh, really happy with the stand we got here, coming up really nice. We always like to plant our cover crops really, really thick and uh, watered these guys in good after we planted them and raked them in and got us a good stand there. Should make some nice dense ground cover throughout the summer months here and we can turn around and plant some cold crops there come fall once it cools off in late September early October or so gonna be doing some more cover crops over here it's where we had that temptress corn I showed you it's since been mowed down and uh, we'll let all that break down a little bit and uh, go in there and cultivate that and get another cover crop down so cover crops going in everywhere we got our sunflower cover crop over here. And uh, on another upcoming YouTube video, I'm gonna be showing you how we interplanted a flower cover crop called Lacey Facilia in the middle of these. So we can kind of get some ground cover in these pathways here. You see those two little lines there? That's where we took our cedar and planted some of this Lacey Facilia cover crop, which is supposed to be just awesome for the soil. So. Lots of good cover crops coming in back, way back there. Or we've still got to pull up one row of tomatoes. We'll be planting more cover crops, cover crops everywhere to rehab our soils during these hot summer months when we can't grow a whole lot.